Hi everyone, John here from ContraBIM and it's definitely that time of the year again when I go through and upgrade or migrate from the previous version of ARCHICAD to the latest release of ARCHICAD. It's November, so that means that it's really the season for uh, trying to wrap up all the other projects so that you can dedicate a few hours or a few days or a few weeks to doing the migration process and um, that's where I'm at right now. So I thought I would take a little break from what I'm working on and share some of the strategies that I'm using this year for actually making the migration of materials and surfaces to the latest version of ARCHICAD 23. Because in ARCHICAD 23, they have gone through, uh, they meaning Graphisoft, and they have really kind of redefined and built out a lot of really beautiful surfaces for us that are a vast improvement from what we had in the previous version, version 22. So um, as I'm going through this process here, I've really started to deploy a different strategy um, of really listing out all of my different surfaces, um, specifically starting with those that have been assigned to building materials. So essentially the default surface setting of the materials and then listing all the additional surfaces that I'm replacing um, with the latest settings in in uh, ARCHICAD 23. So that's kind of the workflow here. Um, you can see on a 2D plan I've just created a little uh, uh, placed visual favorites here for um, upgrading the materials, making sure that they look the way I want. Uh, checking the settings, checking the the pens, the vectoral hatching, um, the surface colors, and really just starting to go through and dial these in. Um, because this year I want to take my template a step further and really enhance the visualization of it. And so I'm finding some different ways that I think can really help achieve that. So um, again, let's just, uh, I'm going to just grab one little section here. We'll just start by taking a look at the concrete. I'll kind of walk you through some of the things that I'm trying to pay attention to as I'm going through and making these updates. So again, here on the left are the, in this case, architectural, structural, and lightweight concrete. So my three primary uh, building materials relating to concrete. So you can see that these are definitely enhanced with some really nice textures. The closer we get in here, the more detail we can see. And so these have yeah absolutely been improved and uh, yeah really happy about the latest version so um, after I've really assigned and you know added upgrade the 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 surfaces relating to these um, I then just continue to go through and list all the additional surfaces so in this case you know starting essentially just starting and listing every single surface that I have in this case related to concrete you can see here I like giving them a prefix of the uh, CSI uh, number, you know, built around 0330 for cast in place concrete. So that's how I typically organize all these just by their um, master format number. Makes it really easy for me to go through and just kind of list them out in order and know exactly where they're at. So, um, so anyway, I've listed these. I started with essentially all the the, the previous versions, so the ones from ARCHICAD 22, or some of these might have even been uh, holdovers from 21 or 20, um, but now I'm going through and for each and every uh, surface, going through and essentially replacing the old settings with the new. And the easiest way of doing this is um, selecting the surface you want to upgrade and then go replace settings from catalog and that way you can get kind of a nice preview of what you're going to be replacing it with. A lot of the times the names are very similar from previous versions to the latest version. Um, obviously the latest version has a 23 as a, uh, a suffix here. So, um, so I'm adding that as well just as I go through the process so that I know exactly um, which, which version I'm using. And so I know it's a little visual indicator here telling me that I've already upgraded this one. So um, all we need to do, again, is we just go in to new from the surface we want to override and replace the settings from catalog. And then we can just go through and pick the setting. And if it's not the right setting we want or we want to test out something else, then we can just go back through and select something else. So pretty easy. Um, one thing to note when you go do, you know, when you do add uh, surfaces this way it will create additional attributes so if it has a specific vectoral hatching related to that particular surface it's going to bring that in 
as a new one. Here I can see that a lot of these have been brought in and are new because they have not been assigned a CSI code to correspond them to the CSI category just yet. But I'll go through and I'll do that later on um, and I'm not worried about that at this point. So, um, okay, so these, uh, one thing I wanna point out while we're in the surface settings here under the basic engine is the surface color and the vectoral hatching element pen or override color. So where these really shine through and a, a part of my uh, template here that I'm really trying to enhance this year is the way that these different surfaces show up in section. And this year I really want to kind of boost the quality of all these so that they really shine through in a nice uh, view whether it's a section or an elevation and to make it available to actually have the surfaces and uh, vectoral hatching really shine through and help define what these surfaces are and what they really mean so concrete I think that's pretty easy to kind of see the differences there let's look at another one maybe the I think this is set up on masonry so here you can really see how this extra little effort of going in and updating the surface color as well as the vectoral uh, hatching pen, how we can start to get these uh, surfaces to really just start shining through. And without even looking at these in 3D, I can tell generally what the, uh, the latest surface color is from you know a darker brick to a lighter, more natural looking or you know tannish brick to a white and you know purplish type brick with our kind of defaults in the middle so um yeah so that's something i'm definitely you know kind of slowing down and doing you know spending a lot of time to really go in and tweak those and make them nice but i do want to just show kind of you know some of the benefits and the uh the enhancements in the render settings here let's let's take a quick rendering of this brick because that's one area where they really went through and um increased the uh the resolution of the textures as well as kind of rebuilding the material render setting so that we get a much nicer uh, bump map out of it and uh, looks much more realistic and so yeah it's something that I definitely have been enjoying going through just kind of rebuilding relisting all those different surfaces uh, testing some new ones and uh, building up the uh, just the the catalog here for what is going to ultimately be used and uh, implemented in the next version of my template. So, um, so we talked about concrete, we talked about brick. Um, what's cool about this also, you know, let me just kind of, we'll grab like a random view right here. Um, so we talked about obviously the, the 3D OpenGL settings, um, but what's cool when we start really focusing and spending some time on the vectoral hatching is we, when we start actually, when we switch over from uh, the OpenGL render engine to the vectoral engine, we can really start getting some cool looking views um, that can be, you know, set up for 3D documents or just, you know, different images of our project. Um, when we start looking at these with the vectoral engine, having those hatches really dialed in gets things to pop out uh, really, really nicely here. Let me just kind of navigate around just a little bit so you can get a little perspective on, on this. So um, we can keep going with this. We can, you know, start overriding them with, uh, say, even a monochrome and really just get some interesting type views um, just by switching our 3D style just super quickly. So I wanted to point that out because that's kind of a nice feature of really uh, spending the time to go through and build out and dial in those vectoral hatches and uh, something we can set up once and then, uh, you know, be done with until we actually want to go in and make some adjustments. So, um, yeah, so that's some of the more interesting ones. Let's see what might be another interesting one. Let's go to like the stone. The stones this year I've spent a little bit more time than normal trying to go through and get the hatching to really reflect what the materials are. Um, obviously the ones that are speckled may be a little bit more like granite. The ones that are a little more streaky are more like, you know, marble, um, you know, maybe something like travertine or slate. So, you know, the goal here is to make these elements really pop out in the different views and so that it really 
it helps kind of tie um, the visual side of 3D and uh, sections and elevations together. So you can kind of see what I'm trying to achieve with, uh, with these settings here. So let's snap another quick little rendering here. So yeah, you can definitely see that this has been, you know, drastically improved. Um, one thing I'll note in this, it, it looks like this stone is just maybe a slightly reflective, but you can, this gives you a good impression here of what the bump mapping channel is now doing. And it's just using that texture image as part of the bump map channel. So it's going through and, you know, depending on the color, just, or the, the, uh, the black white ratio, uh, going to push it in and out based off that. So, um, pretty, pretty nice stuff. Definitely uh, much enhanced from the previous round and something I am very happy about. So what else can I show you that might get you excited about doing this upgrade on your own? Um, well, one thing, obviously there's much, you know, these wood textures have obviously been vastly improved. Let's just snap one right here. This might be an interesting one. We'll let this run. Um, let's go back here though, and um, and one other thing that I'm doing this year that's a little bit different than what I've done in the past is I've spent some time to really take the building materials such as like damp proofing and waterproofing and some of these insulations, uh, essentially building materials that don't necessarily have a very clearly defined 3D view. Um, meaning that typically we just give it like a color or we try to take some other surface that might represent something similar to it. And this year I'm going through and um, kind of rebuilding those, the surfaces that I'm assigning to those uh, materials so that it just is really easy and kind of dummy proof of where you're using those materials. So you get a little better uh, visual feedback to know whether you're using this in the right location or not. So you can see here that I've just built some very basic, essentially two by two grid uh, textures that literally tell you exactly what the purpose is here, whether it's, you know, sheet waterproofing or damp proofing, or there's a few others here um, for, I don't know, insulation and framing. Um, so really trying to enhance some of these views. There's the uh, air barrier. This one doesn't look very good, but if we pulled it over with a copy and start started pulling this out, then it makes a little bit more sense when you can see the whole thing. Obviously, it's not perfect. We don't have these staggered right now. Maybe I'll stagger it in the next version of it, but it um, gives you an idea of you know another purpose of building just very simple materials that really help tie the visual side to what the material is that it's intended to be used as. So, um, so anyway, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, enhancements here in the 23 materials as if we jump back there. Um, and yeah, you know, trying to have fun as I'm going through this, it's obviously always one of those kind of tedious things, you know, where, whether, you know, well, you can do it two ways. One way you can just import all the latest 23 attributes into your file and then work out the issues that you'll have later on when your attribute numbers don't line up. Or you can just kind of go through methodically, pick and choose how you want to migrate and upgrade. And I think that really kind of helps produce a better end result because then you know exactly what's going into it. And so I'd always uh, recommend just trying to uh, you know take your time and make it right because once you set up these attributes and these surfaces and these materials, then uh, you're taking time away later on when you have to go through and reset all these things. So um, definitely good to set them up in the beginning. So, um, okay, well, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. We uh, will definitely be doing a few more videos on some other topics here around um, the upgrade grade process from one version to the next. So hope you enjoyed watching this. And um, yeah, in the next video, um, not sure what we'll talk about, but maybe more on the surfaces or the renderings or um, I don't know. There's a ton of different topics around these migration proce processes that I think are worthwhile. So um, anyway, we'll figure that out when we get there. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.